are we starting with this week? Uh, Spotify. No, we just comment. had a Spotify update. Yeah. No, none of no, them. We review. We review. We review. Three yeah. we reviews. I put up two fingers, three. but it's three. Well, we're getting so many reviews now. Five star reviews. Go to Apple Podcasts and uh, leave us a five star review. We're getting so many of those Gosh. reviews now that I need to read out more. Start coming through them. Yeah. Yeah. You need to start Speak, chugging pick through up the pace a bit. Yeah. Exactly. So this one, the first one, it says, this podcast always manages to lift my mood and make me chuckle. And I've gained so many fun facts from listening. Keep up the good work, boys. Hell yeah. It's very good. Yeah, it's nice very one. Good. The second one says science. Oh, I got that wrong. It says, if science isn't your thing, listen anyway. Good advice. I love science, but the Psy guys make science so entertaining, I challenge anyone to not enjoy it. Corey does an amazing job of explaining the science in simple terms, and I enjoy listening to the Psy guys make intelligent conversation. It's like being on the edge of an interesting conversation at a party. I wish I could chip in, especially when they're talking about psychology. My degree. You'll have listened to every episode before you know it. That's really mm. cool that we have. Like, I, I'm never, I never fail to be pleased and just amazed when we are entertaining to people who have degrees in the things we are talking about. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, it's honestly the scariest thing when someone says, "Hey, I do, I do a PhD in this." If comment starts like that, I, oh. I brick it immediately. But if you enjoy our intelligent conversation, which thank you very much, you can check out Sci Guys After Dark over on our Patreon, a brand new show that we've got where it's just. It's just intelligent conversation. Oh, I was going to say less intelligent. Well, yeah. Don't tell them that. Oh, okay. Well, no, more out. intelligent, definitely. <laughs> and the last review we've got today says, Great pod, five stars as always. This topic is always interesting and the hosts make it super funny too. Definitely my favorite podcast. I like being called the host. Right, yeah. Or the hosts. Yeah. I like having a title. It's a title, yeah. Right? Yeah. It feels powerful. It's like, you yeah. know, like, like the Grandmaster from Marvel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or the Pope. Exactly. From Earth. The host makes oh, me feel what, like um, I am a creature that is like has a bunch of parasites on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> well, yeah. The audience are the parasites, and we are the hosts. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get good reviews, though. Like. I mean, you literally have a bunch of little creatures in you that are that are helping you and yeah. using you. And so an you audience. Are the host. And an audience. Yeah. Okay. Parasiting off of my <laughs> ramblings. Parasocializing off of your ramblings. Oh, God, please, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the question before we jump into the show, I want you to answer this, not you two, but get to the comments in YouTube and answer this. If you're listening, it doesn't matter. Head to YouTube and answer the question. Have you joined our Discord? You've got a Discord. Uh, Just join it. It is a, it is a question. <laughs> it is a question. Have you joined our Discord? Because if you're not, you should check it out. We've got a little community there. We've got some cool stuff that's going to be starting soon. You should definitely check it out. If you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't joined our Discord and you don't intend to, I just want you to I just want you to own up, own up to it. Just write no in the comments. <laughs> and if be you honest. Yeah, just be honest. It's be fine. Honest. We don't mind. You know, we 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 appreciate honesty. Yeah. <laughs> We appreciate Discord I'm gonna server. Get, I'm going to go to the comments and, <laughs> and write no from myself. You're in the server. You built it. Oh, yeah. I'm still going to do that. Shall we start the I'm, show? I'm just <laughs> going to leave. Let's start the show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jeb and Luke Gutford. Yes, you are, sir. Howdy. This week, we're sparking a conversation about boredom. Oh. Finally! Finally. I think I literally asked you to do this episode at one point, like the science of boredom. Oh, this isn't the science of boredom. Oh. <laughs> if you well, look, if you if you had well, it's gonna be quite boring, isn't If it? you had looked at the episode title on YouTube or your podcast app before coming here, you would know that the title is the shocking science of boredom. We're not just talking about boredom <gasps> itself. We're talking about some shocking science in so relation it's to boredom. Not so boring. No, it's not well no. well, depends. Hmm. Well, let the audience decide, really. Mm. We all feel bored every now and then, but certainly not while listening to this podcast, of course. But there are so only so many episodes of Psy Guys. We can't be there for everyone all the time. At some point, you're going to run out and you might become bored. I actually haven't been bored in years. I know that's a weird thing to say. That's I have really not been bored good. in years. Really? I, like, Noah sometimes talks about how bored he is. And I honestly, I'm like, I can't remember what being bored is like. Actually, no, when same. Noah's bored, he's under, he's probably understimulated. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah. I just, I know, I know I have been bored, but I haven't been bored in a long time. Really? It's really no. weird. I wonder why. I'm bored all of the time. Really? Oh. Everything bores me. Are you bored now? Uh, no. Okay. That's uh. good. Wow. We're so, we're so stimulating. I'm, bo I'm borderline. Oh. I'm just busy. 
I felt I good know, about I myself for a moment. Border, borderline. I, don't, I, don't I, underst- bored. I understand. Laugh the joke. at my joke. No, I'm not going to. Oh, you're bored. <laughs> <laughs> Jam, what have you got to say? I've said it. I, I didn't hear it. I just said I'm busy. I don't have time to be bored. I think you can be bored whilst busy. I'm bored whilst busy all the time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no. Okay. okay, what's so shocking about boredom <clears throat> then? So what would you do if you were bored out of your mind and all you had was a button that gave you an electric shock? Would you press it? In uh, 2014, scientists set out to find the answer. Okay. And the answer is yes. yes. Well, it depends. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to it. So first off, what is boredom? Under stimulation? Well, not... Uh, Having nothing to do and not liking it very much. I feel like those are both causes, <laughs> potential causes of boredom, oh. but they're not necessarily boredom in and of itself. You know what I mean? No, I don't, but I'm sure you'll tell me. I probably will tell you, yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> there isn't a definition for boredom um, that is sort of accepted by every scientist, um, or even most scientists, helpful, really. Helpful, yeah. Well, it's a hard thing to sort of define, really, isn't it? You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's this feeling that you get where you want more stuff to do. You feel like you've not got enough stuff to do. Or you've not got enough meaning. You know, it's a yeah. hard, it's a hard feeling to describe. Mm. How would you both describe boredom? So if you've got this part of your brain that is like, find like trying to make a story out of what you're doing, um, then which is called like the narrator, I suppose. Um, then I suppose it's like that thing is incredibly dissatisfied with the current situation, um, and is trying to motivate you towards doing something else, mm. maybe. Um, it's like appraising your current moment and going, this is not what I want it to be. But then in a different way to like fear, which is mm-hmm. like a different type of reaction to the current moment, right? Yeah, I feel like, and this isn't what I've got written down in front of me. This is just sort of my own thoughts here. Uh, it's kind of an un- unfulfillment, right? Yeah, you know, sure. like, And Jam, you say mm. boredom is not having anything to do. And I would fully disagree with you because I could have so much to do. I could, I could literally be sitting scrolling through TV that. channels. Um, not that I watch TV anymore, but you know, scrolling through Netflix, right? And then thinking, I am so bored. I have so much to do. I mm. could watch any of these things. I guess any- doing something you don't want to do could also be boring. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is that's what's interesting about boredom. There's yeah. there's lots of different types that are kind of under the same, mm. you know, sort of feeling. And I feel like because boredom is a feeling, you know, like being happy or angry or scared, like you said. It, it's not usually sort of described as being similar to those feelings because we think of boredom more in what causes it rather than what it what it feels actually like. feels like and what yeah. it is. Right? You don't say, "Oh, happy is when someone gets you a free drink." When I'm smiling, that's what happy is. <laughs> you know, that's something that can cause happiness. Yeah, but it's not what happy what happy is. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as I said, there's no universally de- uh, accepted definition of boredom. Um, but it's not the same as apathy or depression. That much is clear. Those are different things, even though I guess depression and apathy kind of feed into boredom as mm-hmm. well. If you're depressed, you can be incredibly bored, mm. just just absolutely bored out your mind. Um, but it's, it is generally an unpleasant feeling. Um, it comes from usually a sort of lack of stimulation or even in some cases sort of like an overstimulation as well. Like if you think about it, like if you are, um, you you find it sort of understimulating, but it's it the work the work is too difficult. Do you know what I mean? So if you're say in school and you're doing maths and it's just really difficult maths, you could get really bored. But equally, if it's really easy maths, you could also get bored. Right. So it's about straddling that like kind of middle ground between novelty and comfort, where like you the thing you're doing is like difficult enough that it's stimulating, mm. but also not too difficult that you're like, well, there's no point. Exactly. You gotta, yeah. have, right. you gotta have that Goldilocks factor. Oh, yeah. And, so that's, and then the things you're doing. And that's something that comes into um, sort of making content and trying to grow as a, a as a sort of creator in any sort of way, right? So mm. if you're, let's say, even for this podcast, if we were to launch a completely new um, sort of show next week, it would still have to have a lot of ties to Psy Guys. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, Psy Guys, people that like this show would be like, oh, this is too new. I don't like it. Mm. They wouldn't, they would be- <laughs> You think? No, I mean, as in, there would be, like, you need to straddle that line of sort of novelty and, um, yeah. Like, like, that's sort of, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you need to straddle that line. So if you were to do something that was totally different, it'd be too new and people would feel uncomfortable and not want to watch it, you know? Our brains are so, like, simple sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> Where, but, like, if you were to ease into it. Yeah, yeah, you can slowly diverge. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really interesting, actually. It's re- And it's really frustrating. 
right? Mm. Like you, you can't, you can't just. This is what happens. This is this is advice I've given to friends who have tried mm. to steer their YouTube channel in a new direction. They're, they've said, oh. I want to do this new thing, but no one wants to watch. And I'm like, yeah, mm. of course they don't want to watch. You're doing a new thing. They watch you for this thing. You do a new thing. They're like, I don't like this, even mm. though they probably will like it if you just give them a little bit of time to adjust. You see you that know? with bands that completely change their sound, like over the over the course of like one album, mm. uh, they usually cop like a lot of flack for it. But uh, but bands who slowly change their mm. sound over time, over multiple albums, usually get accepted. I mean, compare Taylor Swift to yeah. um, what they called Bring Me, Bring Me the Horizon, mm. right? Bring Me change their sound pretty much like they've changed it like pretty much every album few, like, few times, quite yeah. a lot right whereas taylor swift has had like a very slow gradual transition from country to sort of um that sort of like the pop of the era that, that you know that she was in in the sort of yeah. 2000 2010s to pop now to like out of nowhere folklore right yeah so it's you you see that almost wherever you look not super related to boredom but interesting nonetheless so <clears throat> Boredom is generally, like I've said, considered unpleasant. Um, you don't feel satisfied, um, and it's 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 basically something you find uninteresting. And as I've said, um, you know, it, it comes from it comes from that sort of uh, mismatch between your sort of, um, I guess, ability level with something, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, like the sort of engagement you've got with it, right? So, it, the sort of what sort of, rather the ability level that you have with something and the difficulty level. Of what you're of what you're sort of up against yeah uh, that's just sort of one way that boredom can kind of um manifest as i've said like something's too difficult or too easy it can be boring um there's also the meaning and attentional component a model of boredom which is one the one we're going to talk about today there are other sort of ways of defining boredom but this is one that i found so um According to this model, um, it is sort of uh, boredom is an emotion that signals uh, deficits in attention and meaning, um, and it's not necessarily not necessarily pleasant, but it's sort of a trigger to be like, hey, this thing, no, you do do another thing. This thing is not not useful. Yeah. it's not fun. It's not you know it, it is not getting you anywhere. You need to switch. You need to change tactics and do something else. Right, and it kind of goes into talking about how boredom comes from a feeling of being. I guess, like, um, having low meaning, you know, if something, if you feel like, even if something objectively has, like, sort of meaning to it, a task has meaning to it, when you're bored, it feels like the task doesn't have meaning. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm, if I'm, oh, Jesus, let's think, if I'm doing the captions for Sci Guys and I get bored of doing it, my brain is telling me, this is, this is boring and pointless, you should go and do something else. Yeah. But objectively, I know, no, 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 this is a very important thing that I need yeah. to do. Regardless of how bored I feel doing yeah. it. Yeah. Because your brain's telling you, like, I'm not developing skills or anything useful for me. Mm. So I'm going to be bored, even though it's actually useful for other people. The exactly. guy who captions our, our podcast is currently <laughs> captioning about how Corey finds captioning boring. And I'd just like to say, <laughs> no, 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 I hope not. you're not bored. I hope you're having a good time. And you're currently captioning what I'm saying now, which is super weird. I don't know how he does it. This is a super strange thing to realize that someone is typing my words right now. And I hope they're not bored. I find captioning to be the most tedious, like long-winded thing. Oh, yeah, that's why I don't do it. Yeah. That's why we get. That's why, that's we've, why, got we that's why we've got Raul to do it. That's why we've got Raul doing it. Cause... Thanks, Raul. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, not that I find sort of captioning boring, but because sometimes I find it fine. And that's what's that's what I'm saying. What's interesting here that something that can be boring doesn't always have to be boring. Do you know what I mean? Like I could start trying to read. Yeah, you know, there's been times I've tried to read. Uh, a scientific paper and i'm like jesus this is like pulling teeth but then then last night i was reading one i was like this is one of my favorite things to do in the world i love this and it, it's it's just a mismatch between sort of where you are at right mm. there and then and what like against like like i've said what you're up against so mm. boredom isn't sort of a necessarily universal or constant feeling it is entirely dependent on sort of what's going on inside of you at that moment so different mm. things can be boring boring at different times yeah. you know so a lot of other theories have sort of said that boredom is a sort of low arousal state so you know what i mean by that yeah like uh, like unstimulated yeah yeah um but uh, uh you know according to this paper that uh, i've obviously got linked in the description it says that it's often associated with high and low physiolog physiological um arousal um <clears throat> so the, the, the kind of idea of this is that like i've said a lot of people try to define boredom by its causes rather than by what it is it's like trying to it's what we talk about you know um the same the same thing that we talk about when it comes to sort of gayness as a concept people think of gayness as um <laughs> people think of gayness as a disease and not a symptom 
right? Mm. Yeah. Yes. And the people often Please think, clarify what you mean by that. I will clarify in, in <laughs> Please. but a moment. <laughs> Gay is not a symptom of a disease. <laughs> and no. people think the same people think the same thing about boredom. People yeah. classify boredom almost as well, it's, it's always the reverse with boredom. People sort of classify boredom as a symptom rather than the disease. There are um, sort of, yeah, no, it's the same thing with boredom. People classify it as a symptom uh, rather than disease. There are many causes for boredom, just like there could be many causes for someone being gay. Um, you know, like diarrhea, for example. That makes you gay. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I honestly, I don't know whether diarrhea makes you gay or not. I'm not going to go out and say that, but I will say I'm fairly certain that diarrhea doesn't make you gay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Well, Might make you some... thirsty, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Are you saying that gays are thirsty? No. Well, some of them are. Oh, some of them probably are. Statistically, <laughs> right now, either. Yeah. If you're gay and you're listening to right... Let me try that again. If you're gay and you're listening to this right now, please drink some water. Even if you're not thirsty. No, yeah. just, look, just, just drink... Especially if you're thirsty. It can't hurt for them to just drink some water, unless, of course, they've had almost the exact amount of water that it would take to kill them, and they drink some more. In which you know, case, water poisoning. you're culpable. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that would hold up in a court of law. I, I don't know. Has that been tested? I honestly, I don't this think episode that... is being submitted into evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut this part out. Just cut it out. No. So, um, wow. In the covering murder... up evidence there, Corey. <laughs> in the murder case evidence, of that all is the gays. A... <laughs> First, you call them a disease, and then you try to kill them. Wow. What are you? Yeah, and I then know. you try to cover up the evidence. Well, yeah. Three strikes. <laughs> <laughs> that's You're in the, prison forever. That's how the legal system works. You go to you go to court and they strike one, strike one, strike two, ah, strike three, strike three, off to prison, jail, jail yeah. for you. That's it. Black people only get two You're strikes. Um, oh. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> now, being out would probably be good. Probably really fucking good when it comes to prison. Right? Oh yeah, no. yeah. You're in. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So. Um, according to the Mac model, I say the Mac model, the MEC, the um, <laughs> the meaning and attention components model, um, boredom is an effective indicator of unsuccessful attentional engagement in valued goal congruent activities. Do you guys have any idea what that might mean? Sorry, can you say that again? So boredom is an effective indicator of unsuccessful attentional engagement in valued goal congruent activities. So you have um, you have some goals. You have activities that are to do with achieving those goals. Yes? Y continue. Uh, and then what's the first bit again? <laughs> so you have um, goal congruent activities. So that would be um, activities that are to do with achieving goals that you have. Mm -hmm. And then what was the first section? So, okay. Shall I just explain it? Sure. Yeah. Um... <laughs> a, fa a failure to attend to those activities. I think Corey was quite bored of my uh, attempts here. I just want to put you out your misery, man. Oh, I was having a good time. I don't just, I'm sure you were, but oh, never mind. I don't have anything to say to that. <laughs> really bored here. So um, the explanation comes in the paper. It says, put simply, we get bored when we are not able to pay attention or cannot find meaning in what we are doing. Right. So, yeah, I, I find this really interesting because you, you also have, like, I think we... We have all these emotions that sort of rise up out of our unconscious mm. or our subconscious where like some systems in our brain or maybe in other parts of our body are like paying attention to what's going on, paying attention to what we're doing, analyzing it, and then coming to conclusions, I presume, in a sort of potentially in like a computational way or sim semi-similar to a computational way. Um, and then, um, or maybe more like a neural network rather than computation. Um, and then it provides us with an emotion as the sort of like outcome. So like if you're attracted to somebody um, or if you're scared or if you're anxious or whatever, mm -hmm. um, some process has come to the conclusion and then so it come to that conclusion and then provides you with the emotion, attraction or fear or whatever you might feel to sort of motivate you towards or away from something. Yeah. I Really weird. I like thinking, um, and this is something that's just come to my mind right now, I like thinking of emotions as being the dumbing down of all of that sort yeah. of in information. Exactly. So, like you're saying, you've got that underlying um, like information processing system, which we spoke about in previous episodes, the fact that there's so much going on in your brain that you're not mm. aware of. Um, so that's processing all this information. And then the sort of the dumb monkey brain up there, I say dumb monkey brain, it's, it's you. You see the stuff that's thinking right now? It's you. Is you it? I thought it would be the prefrontal <clears throat> cortex is mo what you identify with, no? 
I, I mean, I say monkey brain as in, I, but is, I don't think that's monkey brain, is it? No, I, I, okay. that, that's why I was clarifying. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so monkey was used as an insult here rather than as a sort of, okay. you know, descriptive indicator of which part of the brain. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it's just because people would talk about like, well, you know, pe- like you're a lizard part of your brain, which is like the base of your brainstem. Mm. And then, then there's the, the chimp paradox to do with your monkey brain, which I think is like your child. Which is in, yeah, which in, is why I clarified because okay. I because I re- I, re- I remembered that so cool. Glad we got there. Yeah, <laughs> monkey brain. <laughs> no. I got it straight away. Don't Thank worry. you. <laughs> <laughs> True monkey brain fell over here. Ooh, he had... <laughs> 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 so the, the the you that's thinking right now, um, you think you're smart, you are dumb, okay, you dumb dumb. So you need emotions to tell you what to do. Someone, uh, someone done something that could be harmful to you, or I could, uh, you know, um, r- reduce your ability to continue to survive. You feel angry. You get mad. Yeah. No, no, no. You stop this behavior that that negatively impact me. You, something come around that you can't fight, but uh, but could kill you anyway. Ooh, you scared. Ooh, Ooh you scared, bro. <laughs> like you got you got to be scared timbers. and stay still or run away, right? emotions are they're painfully complex I'm, I'm dumbing them down incredibly they're painfully complex but in comparison to all of the sort of inputs that you're getting they are very like, they are very basic right mm. you don't think mm. and so it again i i feel like we tend not to think of boredom as an emotion so much as just an experience yeah you, would you yes. agree yeah yeah so is it like so you could you could see it possibly that boredom is like if you're if you're engaged in an activity, mm-hmm. sometimes you can be bored when not engaged in an activity, of course. But if you are engaged in an activity, and that activity is you know consuming calories in the form of computational power of your brain, and your brain can't work out why you're doing it, so it's just like, why are we doing this? This is costing us time. It's costing us energy. It's costing us all these things. Why are we doing it? That's that's the like lack of meaning. Like yeah. not being able to find a meaning in it. I mean, I guess, and this is this is. I mean, I want to say to everyone listening, this is purely speculation yeah. on our part. We know. Well, you know some things. I know nothing. No, as in I, we, I don't know this. Okay. Um. So this is that's what I'm saying. Like what I'm 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 calling out my own speculation here. Mm. I I don't know. I think that's fairly that's that's a fairly sort of astute um view of it. I think that although I will say that the compu- the calories for the computational power of your brain, I think are lower than you would think this is going back from what a teacher told me in high school um because i said the same thing as you and he said no no, okay compared to the other stuff you do but i think that like warm yourself up exactly (laughs) right but you're on i think you're i think like you're on the right track there in terms of like if you're doing an activity the activity is going to be costing some kind of it's going to be taking up some kind of energy yeah at least at least it's an opportunity cost of what you could otherwise be doing exactly you could be involved in something productive yeah. yeah. Or even then, when you're bored from not doing anything, it could be a signal to your, you know, saying, hey, you should be doing something. Yeah. I often find, like, for example, when I get stressed, that stress is a response to the fact that I, there's something I've forgotten to do. Mm. Like, there's something I should be doing, and I'm either putting it off or I've forgotten, and I'm getting stressed. And I'm usually doing something else as well. But like I'm getting stressed over something that I'm like I have put off or forgotten. Yeah, I feel like I get stressed a lot when I'm like I can be doing other things. Um, to the I could get stressed a lot and I'm doing other things, and that drives me to not do anything because I need to do the other thing that I'm stressed about. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so I, I I can't do anything. I get I literally there have been weeks of my life. I mean consecutive weeks of my life that have just been gone for me just not doing anything because <laughs> I'm like oh I need to do this thing. And I'm not allowed to do anything else till I do this thing. Yeah. But I don't want to do the thing. Yeah. yeah. You don't do it. I don't want to do no, it. I don't want to do the thing. I don't want to do it. But it, talking about the sort of emotions and feeling them, because I mean, we'll, we'll get to the we'll get to the actual study that we're going to talk about in a bit. But talk about emotions and feeling them. I think it's really interesting having sort of anxiety and just every now and then feeling anxiety in your body and being like, where is this coming from? What has happened? Oh, nothing. Cool. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll just wait for this to stop. And you know, like your stomach is like going and like your brain is kind of like feeling like buzzy. And I'm just sitting there like, wow, this is tedious. This is a very tedious emotion. That's really interesting. So is anxiety um, like, because I always wondered, I always thought maybe anxiety was generally to do with misappropriating or misapplying uh, the anxiety response to something actually um, meaningful, Mm -hmm. like uh, meaningless. So like, like, like like a trauma response. 
but can anxiety come from literally nothing at all? Like no stimulus, not a, a miss um analyzed stimulus, a literally no stimulus misfire of some part of your body. I mean, in my experience, yes. Right. Um yeah. I mean I do get anxiety about things that are, don't deserve anxiety. Mm. Which is why often uh I'll ask a, like, you know, you'll say something and I'll ask a question. You say, Well, that's obvious. I'll be like, yes, but I have anxiety. I'm just I'm like heading it off before my brain even goes there. I'm just, you know, getting a clarification before my like my brain is like, you should be anxious about this, right? But sometimes, um, you know, maybe if I've had a bit too much caffeine or something, my body is just like, hmm, something's wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, what's wrong? Nothing. Something. 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 <laughs> oh, I'll go back to you. Am I is it really something wrong? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Oh, that poor bit of you though is just like Something's wrong. I don't know what, though. No, nah, man, I hate that bit of me. That bit of me winds oh, me up. Oh, it's a baby. <laughs> Leave it alone. It's just trying to protect you. <laughs> but I, I generally get bored of feeling anxious sometimes. Yeah. Genuinely, because I'm just sitting there like, I just want to I want to relax. This is boring. This experience has become tedious for me, you know? And yeah. I think that's it's interesting in that sort of like mismatch of like, well, I know that this anxiety is is fruitless. So So what? Can we stop this experience now, you know? And so what does boredom do? Like what, what happens when you're bored? We understand kind of what, what boredom is and where it comes from, kind of generally what the feeling is, but what happens when you are bored? Do you become erratic? Well, you can actually, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, lots of different things can happen when you're bored. Does that mean off the rails? Not, I not literally, <laughs> no, no, I literally read a story about someone stealing a tank and their, oh. their explanation for why they did it was I was bored. <laughs> Apparently a lot of no, apparently yeah. a lot of like crimes and disturbances. Sorry. People have nothing to say, yeah. but I'm bored. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. And so when yeah, it comes, you get that with like kids, don't you? If they're just like, if, if home's not a very nice environment and they're bored, mm. they just go out and cause cause hassle. Well, yeah. Think about the kid, like sort of kids with ADHD. I mean, like you, if boredom can come from understimulation, that's, ADHD that's kids are understimulated like all the yeah. time, so they could be bored constantly, yeah. Yeah. constantly. And then you think you act out because like you're bored. You're gonna do something, you know. Yeah. Um, and as well, if you're like sort of, you've got a smart kid that's uh, understimulated, they could act out as well. Do we know what neurotransmitters are released or not released when people are bored? Mm, I didn't look into that. We can do another episode on the science of boredom. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this again, like, I want to be totally clear. The, the reason this one's called the shocking science of boredom is because I totally want to do another episode specifically on the sort of. Um, specific brain science of boredom but mm. this one was just an interesting story that i saw on twitter and mm -hmm. i searched up the article and i found it and i thought it was really interesting and that other episode will be called the not so shocking science of boredom or the boring science of the boredom. boring science of boredom yeah Very plainly good. average science of boredom. yes <laughs> nice nice just a completely gray thumbnail just a <laughs> yeah that's just such a vsauce move <laughs> <laughs> no title no nothing <laughs> so um binge eating Boredom can be yeah. a cause for that a lot, um, and, you know, along with uh, uh, depression and anxiety. Boredom is another um, sort of trigger for that. Um, uh, there's been studies about uh, distractibility using driving simulators. People who are prone to boredom uh, apparently uh, drove at uh, higher speeds typically than other people um, in the same study. Uh, they took longer to respond to unexpected hazards and drifted more frequently over the central line. Central line. The, the central line of the road. Oh, the central line. I know. That they drifted onto better. the central line. <laughs> Man, they really got oh. on the rails. Oh, the worst wow. line. It's true. Go on. No. On the rails this yeah, time. Yeah, on the there rails, exactly. Go. Yeah. Very it was good. a reference yeah. to less than a minute ago. I understand. Anyway. So, uh, in a 2003 survey, uh, US teenagers uh, said they were that said they were bored, uh, were apparently 50% more likely than their less frequently bored peers to take up smoking, drinking, and illegal drugs. So uh, addiction can also be caused, or sort of you know, drug use and um, alcohol use, can also be caused by uh, boredom, which mm. makes sense. And especially like when it comes to binge eating, I eat when I'm bored. I mean, I've actually stopped doing that. That was a big thing for me. I would eat when I was bored all the time. Like at home, I just eat when I was bored. At work, so, when I was working yeah. in an office job, they had biscuits and snacks and stuff. I got bored there so often because I was I had nothing to do. I would just eat because, like, what else are you gonna do? Mm. It's something. Yeah, I wonder picky. if boredom has anything to do with dopamine. Sorry, I know I'm getting <laughs> onto that. I'm stepping on the toes of this other really boring episode we're gonna do. But <laughs> like, like that, a lot of that dopamine a is boring like, episode. Sorry, go on. Ooh. It's like motivating you towards things. Dopamine, isn't it? And if if it's if you're then finding yourself eating or smoking or like, because mm. if with with um. With it smoking, is, for oh. example, you, t you you can take dopamine reuptake in inhibitors to um, 
Oh, that increases dopamine. I don't really understand how dopamine works then. I think, right. ignore I me. I think dopamine works in that it's the anticipation where the dopamine yeah. is released rather than, I think a lot of people think that the dopamine is like, ah, yes, a rush of dopamine when reach goal. I think it's actually no. mm. anticipation of reward that causes release of dopamine. Mm. Um, and I guess, I suppose, and again, speculation. I want to be totally clear with that. Don't take this. This is just speculation. Um, I guess that when it comes to boredom, yeah, maybe there is less dopamine being released because there's a there's a lesser anticipation of a reward mm. when you find something unfulfilling or understimulating. Mm. You know, it's it it is it is really interesting the sort of science that you that we've got behind boredom here. So just to quickly recap, we've spoken about how there's different sort of causes for boredom. There's sort of the under challenge and over challenge aspects. I just want to quickly go over that sort of stuff again to before we go on to the sort of study that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so it's not just about paying attention um or finding meaning you, you, you gotta you gotta kind of have both to an extent do you know what mm. i mean so you can be bored if you don't have attention you can be bored if you don't have um if you if some you feel like you're doing something meaningless and if you have you, if you're doing something you find meaningless and you can't pay attention to it then you're gonna be like doubly bored and there's yeah. sort of two different kinds of boredom that are uh, kind of um there, there's sort of two different kinds of boredom that come from these sort of things you know there's sort of the attention deficit and the meaning deficit um and so they kind of feel different as well. I'm sure you've probably felt different, you know, there's different kinds of boredom, right? Yeah. Well, you've not felt boredom in a long time, Luke. No, no, but, but there are different types of boredom. There is like boredom of, um, you're bored of what you're doing and you're, there's boredom for, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So I'm bored. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, like, like, so it says here that meaningless boredom um, could be caused by meaning deficits and is often characterized by high arousal feelings of sadness and loneliness and distorted time perceptions, oh. but most of all by the desire to disengage. Um, and then attention, um, sort of attention deficit, uh, deficits of boredom um, uh, are characterized by sort of difficulty concentrating, mind wandering and inattention. And then you've got mixed boredom, which obviously is kind of a mix of the two, um, which kind of has, uh, you know, obviously a mix of those those different sort of, I guess, symptoms or experiences rather, you know? And you've probably experienced, you've probably experienced those. It's just mm. interesting that there's sort of, it's always interesting when there's science looking into this sort of nebulous feeling, trying to characterize it. Yeah. yeah. Because it is, it is, it's very, when you think about it, it's very difficult to sort of pinpoint how boredom works. And it might not mm. even be one feeling. It might no. be like different types of feeling that we've classified all in the same word as mm. boredom. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've also spoken about what boredom does. Generally, it can cause people to act out and do things that are probably not their best. Oh, Luke. Sorry. Bored. Ah, what the hell? My feelings. I'm bored of being hit. Stop. <laughs> Slap me back no, then. No. If you're so bored. Slap me back, he says, like a pirate. I'm sorry, man. I don't know. Whenever anyone says me, I think pirate. <laughs> Slap me back, You matey. must think pirate a lot, then. I think it's so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> So why don't we get into this study? Look, you've uh, you've uh, seen this study before, right? Well, I've seen it a long time ago. Yeah, I've seen a video of it actually. Really? Um, yeah, which is, or at least a similar study, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, yeah, the, the individual is put in a room. I can't remember whether there's like a, a control group who are like less bored, like they have something to watch or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically, individuals put in the room as a little electric buzzer that buzzes them when they t press the button. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves there. Oh, okay. Oh, I yeah, apologize. No, I, was, I, was, no, I was just curious if you'd seen the whole study. Oh, okay. So there are actually 11 studies in this sort of one oh. paper. So kind of 11 sub-studies in this one study. Um, and it said that, uh, you know, it, and I'll just read the sort of abstract there for you. Uh, in 11 studies, we found that participants typically did not enjoy spending 6 to 15 minutes in a room by themselves with nothing to do but think. <laughs> Of course they, they didn't. <laughs> Look, Six you to would fifteen enjoy, minutes. Is you would so love short, that. Though, I actually it? wouldn't mind that. I would meditate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what I was. This yeah. is exactly what I was thinking. I was, I was reading this. And I'm like, I'm really glad they didn't use. Luke. I would nap. Well, they weren't allowed yeah. to sleep. Wow. What? Well, yeah. You've got to sit and think. You can't nap. I don't add rules. The, I've not even gotten to that. I've, oh, <laughs> I've not gotten to the rules sake. yet. So um. They enjoyed doing mundane external activities much more and that many preferred to administer electric shocks to themselves <laughs> instead of being left alone with their thoughts. Jeez. And most people seem to prefer to be doing something rather than nothing, even if that something is negative. We'll get to the sort of, that's that's the abstract from the paper. We'll get to the sort of criticisms of the paper um, once we've gone through it. But uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's basically 11 uh, different sort of studies where generally they put people in a, a controlled room 
Um, sometimes they don't. We'll, we'll just go through chronologically all of the studies. It also starts with a quote from Paradise Lost, which I think is interesting. The quote is, the mind is its own place and in itself can make heaven of hell and hell of heaven. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just, John uh, Milton. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start my paper with John That's Milton. the wanky thing, <laughs> wankiest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I, I, I kind of dig it. It's cool. I like it. But, you know... Um, so there were some unanswered questions um, that kind of directed the sort of course of this study. Um, the idea is essentially that uh, there's sort of um, there's this sort of inward directed thought. You know, when you're thinking to yourself, you're sitting just like thinking, no outside stimulus. It's just all going up on up in your noggin. Mm. Um, that's called default mode processing, um, and it's had a lot of sort of attention. Um, yeah, you know all about you know uh, all about, all default, about mode. default mode. Oh, we've got so many pictures of <laughs> Jam in default mode. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. I'm not engaging. I Sim awaiting off. instructions. <laughs> <laughs> is that the default mode? Is that actually default mode? Well, for oh. jam, sure. Oh, for jam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Factory settings. <laughs> yeah. You got to stick a little Demo pencil mode. up there. <laughs> <laughs> Under stimulated. But despite sort of studies on this default mode processing, uh, the study that we're looking at says that there uh, were sort of two questions that were sort of unexplored. Bear in mind, this is back in 2014. Um, it said, do people choose to put themselves in default mode by disengaging from the external world? And when they are in this mode, is it a pleasing experience? Right? So essentially, do people sort of, do people when they're, you know, like sitting, decide, okay, I'm going to thank you myself. Um, and when they do that, is it pleasant? Generally, one would assume no, which is why meditation is so bloody difficult, right? Sure. Yeah. It was interesting because I wonder when you said like people who are bored experience feelings of like loneliness or sadness. Um, I wonder whether that is actually that the feelings of loneliness or sadness are sort of a low level thing all the time. And then when there isn't stimulation, it's the only thing that's clear to you. It's like it's obvious when mm. you don't have anything. Like if if I was like constantly going, you suck. You saw what the hell? really quietly all the time, but then there was always loud music playing. Yeah, we were always like I was always talking over yeah. it, and you were yeah. continuing to do that thing, and then suddenly I stopped talking. All you would hear was, "Yeah, you saw." Like you wouldn't say <laughs> that the lack of Corey talking causes the hit, the the feeling of you saw. Mm. You wouldn't attribute causation. Like, Interesting. Like yeah. I wonder if it's those levels because we live in a society that sort of creates loneliness as well. Like that's quite prevalent. Uh, and like we have, a, yeah, there's lots of people who are sad. That's interesting. The way, so the way that I thought about it was, um, I guess, not necessarily completely uh, opposite of that, but it's more that when you when you don't have stimulation or when you're sort of thinking in in yourself, your mind can wander, and it can sort of lead you to places, and there's nothing to sort of pull you out of that sort of mm. spiral. Not that you necessarily would always spiral, but you know, if your mind is just wandering. It might lead you to sort of meet things that you often ignore, which well, is kind of I, which is no, which is I mean, no. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's it, it, which is I mean, I guess a similar, if not yeah. the same. Yeah, and because that is the thing of meditation is it's about noticing the kind of underlying things that mm. are kind of the background of your experience and being able to go well. Now that I've noticed them and I know they're there, rather than avoiding them, I can actually do something about them mm. um, rather than pretending they don't exist. And I have friends who've like. Um, yeah, who I've noticed will like, like, be very uncomfortable if it's quiet, and be. Very, you, yeah. you, like, oh, I hate. Si do you I right? Despise silence. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Fall asleep watching TV as a kid. Like, don't even need to watch it. But yeah, like, sure. Oh, that do the same thing now. Absolutely abhor silence. And yeah, and to me, mm. that the my very unscientific way of making sense of that is that there's an, a low lying, underlying discomfort. Um, in their experience of being themselves and that they they try and cover it up with but I don't know if that's true it's just how I've made sense of it I think well, correct me if I'm that wrong, wasn't about you no, no, I, I didn't actually know you didn't like silence well, so. what, the, what it sounds like I'll you're keep saying is all that, the time <laughs> <laughs> what it sounds like you're saying is that um, there is this sort of constant feeling of it mm. that is sort of thrown into sort of stark contrast when there's silence mm. whereas I feel what I'm saying and this might be similar to what you're saying or the same as what you're oh, saying okay. I think it's slightly different yeah. in that there isn't necessarily that low level feeling there. You're just, you, you can, you just can be prone to leading yourself there. Yes. And the, the stimulation that you receive distracts you from it. Right. So it's like, yeah. uh, like, it, it's like uh flappy bird. Jesus Christ. It's like flappy <laughs> bird, right? You tap the screen and the bird goes up. Yeah. You stop tapping. The bird goes down. Yeah. Tapping is like sort of external, external stimuli. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> sad feelings are down. Good feelings are up. Yeah. Right. 
you distract yourself and when you don't have that distraction you let your mind wander yeah and if it wanders it can go to a place that you don't necessarily want it to go yeah which is why you know you could um you, i could let my mind wander with a sort of um I, I could let my mind wander and it could be generally fine like it's not always silence isn't always awful it's just silence in some sort of in some scenarios you know yeah yeah, you're right. There's a subtle difference between the two, mm -hmm. um, but the same outcome, which is that there, that that the source of the sad feelings are is not the boredom mm. or the understimulation. It's the 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 inverse, i.e., stimulation mm. covers up or prevents, in the case of your argument, um, the delving of your mind into that section. Sure, and again, we could both be right for different people, and yeah. also that's we probably are, and this isn't necessarily universal um to everything like boredom itself could generally cause bad feelings yeah um people are complex and there are plenty of us yeah yeah very good yeah <clears throat> so um that, that those are the unanswered, unanswered questions i've said so do people choose to put themselves in de default mode by disengaging from the external world and when they are in this mode is it a pleasing experience um and they're the the, the paper sort of brings up studies um, that were done sort of recent or at, recent at the time of the study um, saying that sort of 95% of American adults said that they did one leisure activity in the past 24 hours, like watching TV, socializing or reading. Um, but 83% reported that they spent no time whatsoever relaxing or thinking, which, yeah, I mean, it's it, I, I, I tend not to sort of just sit and think intentionally that just it happens accidentally a lot. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I'm like, I'm, you know, you're watching TV and then you're like, uh, oh. Whoever goes, I'm going to sit down and have a think now. I have a think sometimes. Do you? Yeah. Sit down and go, so, I'm going to think now. Yeah. But not not a relaxing, okay. not a relaxing think. Uh, yeah. Sorry, not a, not, a, not a planning think, a relaxing think. A relaxing think. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I'm going to no. have a relaxing think. Yeah. Hmm. Hello. Well, yeah. I think we can agree, all of us, everyone in the world, that you are an outlier when it comes to this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You, you said at the top of this episode you've not been bored in years. Yeah. That's probably, probably why. Probably because I, I just, when I am bored, I have a relaxing think instead. Maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, you can, achieve, yeah. you can achieve sort of meaning out of that. Yeah. So that's probably a positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. We should be studying. Let's crack his head open and study it. Please don't. I need that. Mm, For now, you can have it afterwards. You won't need it once your head's cracked open, will you? Well... Um, I, I suppose Preferably not. not. <laughs> it's the kind thing to do, Luke. Okay. Please donate your head to science. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you insist. So <clears throat> it also goes on to talk about exter external stimuli or lack thereof. So most research on daydreaming and mind wandering at that point had been focused on task unrelated thought, as in basically when people were trying to do uh, an external task, uh, but they let their minds wander involuntarily. Mm. And it's re the sort of example here is like reading a book which I love reading books and I hate reading books because it's, I will go five pages and realize I have not taken in a single word of this. Because <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm like, oh, what? But like genuinely, this is, I was reading this, um, I was reading this book on capitalism a, a while ago and it was really difficult for me to get through because one, it was like really dense and it was um, sort of a, a book on sort of, I mean, I guess sort of politics and in mm -hmm. a way that I hadn't read a book before. But whenever it brought up something, I would always, my mind would wander and be like, oh, but what if this was like uh, a story? How, like, what if this was like a narrative? What if this was like a sci-fi story? It was the same when I was reading that other book about the hidden secrets of the brain. I was like, ah, oh, but this would be a really fun sci-fi story. And then I'd write that in my head and I'd be like, you know, two chapters down and hadn't taken in the rest of the book. <laughs> <laughs> you, Useless. Do you guys, please tell me this is a novel. No, 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 yeah. yeah. I, this is why I don't read much. <laughs> Absolutely. It, yeah. You're a writer. You're a natural writer. Yeah. You just see ideas and go, how can I make a narrative out of this? Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Thank yeah. you, Luke. Yeah. Okay. So um, this study ten, uh, went to sort of focus on complete sort of under, like no external stimuli, right? Generally, no, no external stimuli. Um, so in studies one to six, they used college student participants uh, who spent time by themselves in an unadorned room. Uh, for six to fifteen minutes, depending on the study, um, and after they after they sort of um, after they put all their belongings away, including like phone, laptops, everything like that, they put that away. That's when they went into the room, um, and there were the only rules that they had were that they had to stay in their seats and they had to stay awake. Very simple: sit down, stay awake. That's it. Um, and after that sort of period of thinking, you know, we call it the thinking period. Uh, participants answered questions on how enjoyable the experience was and how hard it was to concentrate. Stuff like that. 
And the results of um, one to six were that most people said that it was difficult to concentrate. So 57.5% said um, that it was at or above the midpoint of the scale that they were using um, in terms of difficulty to concentrate and that their mind wandered. 89% of them responded at or above the midpoint of the scale for sort of how much your mind wandered. Um, and even though there was nothing competing for their attention, like there was absolutely nothing. You know, they were sitting in a completely sort of empty room by themselves. Mm. Nothing could take your, your attention away and their mind was just wandering. They found it really difficult to um, stop that. And on average, they didn't enjoy the experience. 49.3% uh, reported enjoyment that was at or below the midpoint of the scale. So, <laughs> yeah. Two stars. No, not a very fun, <laughs> not a very fun experience here. Um, and so study seven, um, they told uh, college AIDS participants uh, to do this at home, which I thought was quite interesting. So the idea was that... Um, uh, is that like how would this be sort of modified if they were in, if they were in a sort of more familiar environment, you know, um, but still not allowed to do anything? Um, and so they clicked a link to uh, a sort of program that they had online uh, when they were alone and had no outside distra distractions. Um, and a lot of people found it really difficult to follow the, to follow that. Thirty two percent said that they had cheated by doing Amazing. something else. Amazing. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad that they responded that because they were you know okay go home and sit for six to fifteen minutes. And they yeah. literally could not do it. How many more lied about it? Well, I don't think. Well, mm. the fact that the fact that thirty-two percent said that they did, I don't think. I don't think that many would have probably lied. Mm. I mean, some probably would. That's always a case of when yeah. you do a study like this. But still, the fact that thirty-two percent of them <laughs> reported cheating. Like, yeah, I cheated. I cheated, man. Like, I, was, I, I, I could, six minutes. I, now I picked up my phone, man. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was list, like listening to music or looking at their phone or getting up out of their chair. Um, and there was no evidence that participants enjoyed the experience more when they were at home, which is really right. interesting, right? You okay. like you think, oh, maybe you'll enjoy it less in an unfamiliar place that's got nothing in it. But yeah. at home, yeah, I, to be honest, I'm going to be honest, I don't think, unless I had something to look at, right? There's a lot of stuff to look at in this room. I, I don't think I'd enjoy it. I would assume they'd enjoy it less. Really? Because you're in a place where you're like, usually you're like, I can get comfortable and do what I want. Mm. And suddenly you're, you're not allowed to. Oh, that's fair enough, yeah. That's yeah, interesting, like, yeah. Mm. I do wonder about, though, the fact that they have been told they can't fall asleep yeah. because then they are spending it's not like that the, the then the data is just absolutely the baseline of the human brain because they're also expending effort making sure they don't fall asleep in an environment where they presumably are warm they are unstimulated that, that it'll be perfectly normal or reasonable to think i'll just go to sleep yeah but i think over six to 15 minutes i don't think they're necessarily no 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 that. of course you know what but I mean? like I think what, your whatever mechanism sends you to sleep might not understand the context i've got six to 15 minutes in here sure so like it would be a perfectly normal perfectly understandable response for the brain to go well there's nothing for me to do i'm gonna shut down fair enough yeah i i think that um i think it was more just to stop people from trying to win it by going yeah to sleep. yeah you know of, course, I mean? of course of yeah. course as in choose like making the effort so you could go skipping forward into the future yeah which how i view it i love that right? i love it Oh, I've got. I want <laughs> oh, the thing to happen. That. May as well sleep. Yeah, did that for my exam results. It's fantastic. <laughs> Just skip ahead and get them. That's it. Yeah, slept fast for, travel. It's like for months after my exams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. So they said that um, their enjoyment was lower at home when they were in the lab. Apparently, so you were mm -hmm. you were uh, right on there. Um, and it was harder to concentrate on their thoughts when they were at home, probably because there were more distractions. Yeah. Um, around them. Um, and the. Again, it says that the differences there um, have to be sort of like taken with a grain of salt, essentially, because they didn't randomly assign them to a location. Um, they, you know, they were just at their homes. Um, but apparently it's I, just... I did the six minutes in my television room <laughs> <laughs> where the walls are made of televisions. <laughs> I'm so bored. And they're un like, we cannot stop the televisions by any means. Yep. Even the floor is a television. Yep. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, apparently it suggests that just thinking at home isn't any easier. Like just thinking at home isn't any easier than doing it in a lab. Uh, study eight, um, would they enjoy themselves more if they had something to do? So they allowed them to entertain themselves uh, with, uh, with their own thoughts or to engage in external activities like reading a book, listening to music, or just going online. And uh, so obviously there was one group that had to just entertain themselves with their thoughts and the other group got to do something like, you know, fun. What? or something slightly more Fun. engaging an external engaging activity like going online listening to music that sort of stuff but they were told don't contact anyone no interaction you got to stay like you got to think by yourself mm. but um you, you can do something else do you know what i mean mm. so no interact with anyone else so you've still got that sort of internal thing but yeah. um you're allowed to have external stimuli um so non-social internet activity 
right? Uh, and the participants enjoyed external activities way more than just thinking. Um, and they found it easier to concentrate and they said that their minds wandered way less. Which is actually, now that I'm thinking about this, this is really weird because whenever I need to focus on doing work, I I tend to do a lot of it in the shower or in, or on the toilet. Yeah. So there's mm. very little going on in there to distract me. You know, I can just... Yeah, the showers, the showers are really good. It's fantastic. Yeah, I accidentally do work in there all the time. I'm just yeah. like, oh, I'll check my phone. And then I'm like, oh. An email. Well, I've written a Sci Guys episode now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you write with your phone in the shower. Sometimes, yeah. I used to think of YouTube video ideas in the shower, but I never like actively did work in the shower, as in like took a device in to work with. I f well, I have my phone. I, I bring my phone into the bathroom with me. And it sits on the edge, like away from the water. And I'll sometimes pick it up to look at something or whatever. Wow. And then um, I will, I don't know how it happens. I just end up doing work. <laughs> sometimes I'll sit down and just let the shower pour over me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. literally. Just oh, a good sit down shower. Yeah, good sit down shower. Yeah. 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 yeah it gets the work. So many episodes of the show have been written in my shower. Nice. And on my toilet. Yeah. Fun fact. Nice yeah. to know. Yeah. Just think of yeah. that whenever you're listening. I will. <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. Was this I am in the shower now. <laughs> <laughs> or on the toilet. Where was this one written? This one was actually written right here. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No water involved. While I was drinking some water. <laughs> it smells fun. No, there wasn't any water coming out no. of me or going on to me. No. Just going coming into out me. Of you. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why would water be coming out? Oh, yes, the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to double check that you know what a toilet is for. It's a sitting, a sitting on. Okay. okay. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm bloated right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have been for over 20 years. <laughs> when will I ever feel relief? <laughs> ever since you outgrew those nappies, it's just been a real uphill struggle. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean, outgrow nappies? You still wear nappies? Well, he doesn't go to the toilet, does he? Who so? doesn't? <laughs> oh, you mean have to get bigger nappies? I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've looked at those studies. We looked at studies one to eight, uh, you know, with the college students in different environments. What do you think might be something that we should look into at, at, at this point? Electrocuting no. them. No. That's okay. what I was going to say. So it, we, we've done study one to eight with just college students. What should we do now? Not college students. Babies. What the? <laughs> one of you was right. The other one. I was, was right. I don't I? want to talk about it. I was right, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that having conducted a scientific experiment, babies don't like being left in a room on their own for 15 minutes. <laughs> no, baby, you're not allowed to cry. Stop crying. Or fall asleep. Mm. Naughty fall asleep. baby. <laughs> Listen to me. Jam, if you were right, then both of you would have been right. Yeah, because I said not college students. Yeah. Most, oh, most okay, babies yes. are not college students. Well, well what age did boss baby go to uni? Boss Baby didn't go to uni. Wow. No, I know. What he was, king? I know, he, he was uh, sort of more vocational. He was an entrepreneur. Guy. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen that film, but I feel like I have, you know? I feel like I've seen, I feel like I've seen it. You've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> have you done the Boss Baby Choose Your Own Adventure on Netflix? I have. Oh, good God. <laughs> you have to, you wow. say that you are it's always like... <laughs> busy and you always have things to do and then you no, come out with something like that. I did it like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, I it's mean, like I Bandersnatch feel like for you boss. You definitely baby. understand boredom, then, don't you? Yeah, you've gone through every single no, one. Find all of the boss baby. I endings. wasn't bored. I just wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most horrific thing yeah. I've ever heard on this podcast. That is so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, to see whether this difficulty with just thinking was um, solely <laughs> like solely down to them being college students, yeah. which you know, absolutely fair, because we shouldn't really be just testing college students, and a lot of the time we do. Just white college students. We, we do it. All, we do it so so. Often. Are they not indicative of the entire population, Corey? You know what? No, oh, generally that's not. Surprising. Not yeah. in this context. Yeah, no, white no. American no. college students. Nah. I thought that would represent everybody from every culture. That's very true. It's very true. Maybe they do. Who Maybe. Knows? Easy mistake. We should do Easy a meta mistake. analysis of all the studies done on white college students in America, and then all the other studies. <laughs> Well, it's like the Stanford Prison Experiment, which apparently we should do another episode on, by the way, because apparently that is less um, reliable than we first thought. Because it was just all college students. Well, we, I think we spoke about that in the episode, but I think the issue was more that a lot of it was fudged and not true. Right, okay. But I'm, I'll look into it and I'll get back to you all. Thanks. But yeah, no, it's, it's like looking at Lord of the Flies and saying, ah, yes, this is a human experience, not rich little white boys yeah. um, on an island, mm. you know? 
So uh, they went to look at other people. Uh, they went uh, to a farmer's market and a local church. Um, the participants were between the ages of 18 to 77. The median age was 48 years. Do they know that... It's Christmas it time not, at all? No. No. Do they know that by some crazy <laughs> fluke, all those 18 to 77-year-olds weren't also studying at college? Luke? Yeah. You would be fantastic mm. at doing discussion sections for papers. Thank you. You are so difficult. To <laughs> Have you, did you ask everyone if they were currently studying at college? If not... Mm, no, Luke. Luke. Yes, they probably did. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Although you, your study design is impeccable, honestly. Thank you. Mm. Well done. <laughs> what if they lied? Wow, well, that's true. That's I guess true. I guess science has fallen. We, yeah. it's you know, the last bastion of truth is gone. <laughs> we, Thirty-three percent of the farmers' market participants later admitted to lying and actually being college students. <laughs> <laughs> so. The same as in study seven, they did the study in their own homes. I mean, obviously, it's probably easier to get them to do that um, rather than going up to some seventy-seven year old and be like, you know, do you want to come? Do you want to come to my lab? Can we get in this box? I want. I want. I want you to sit <laughs> in my box for a bit. Oh. Although, actually, they could have just done it. They could have just fitted out like a van, a boring van, but people sit in it for six to fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah. Let well, me get some money. We'll do that. The boring van. Mm. Yeah. Oh no, Elon Musk could be after us. Imagine if you were looking at it and you were like, I wonder what that is, and you broke into it. And it was literally entirely boring. boring. And then you accidentally got locked inside. But I feel like that'd be quite an interesting story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. You're doing it again, Corey. <laughs> You're going, how can I make a narrative out of this? Well, you, you know, you get you break into a van and it's incredibly boring. And you come out and you try to explain it to people. But it's so boring. It's like, well, why are you telling me the story? Why but in it? that yeah. sense, it's interesting. Yeah. Right? It's subver subverted boredom. But not really. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a film out of it. The most boring film of all time. So, as I said, they were doing it in their own homes, obviously, because you don't want to put them in the boring van. Um, and the results were similar to what they found with the college students. So college students aren't the only ones that find it difficult to just think. Um, there wasn't any evidence that the enjoyment of the thinking period was related to the participants' age, education, income, or the frequency with which they use smartphones or social media. Mm. That's really interesting, because it means you don't get better at sitting alone being bored as you grow up. Well, I, mm, I don't... Mm, Grow up, children probably are really poor at sitting and getting bored because they've got poor regulation of their emotions. Yeah. But, Sorry, as you age, as you become yeah. older and older. This is something that I think is, like I, again, I wouldn't take this from that study. Okay. Because this is this is a small study, right? It's not a study that's setting out to find this. It's just saying this is indicated from our study, which it's fair enough. Like this is, a, this is something that I feel it's very easy to do to see a study say this shows this and then to infer something from that. But... I think with the sample size, they were looking at the fact that this mm. wasn't the focus of the study. You said it was, it suggests that, right? Yeah, well, that's well I said it means, which is oh, incorrect. Okay. But I, I just would have thought that, yes, if you did a, a bigger study on this, you would find a trend because older people come from a generation where there wasn't quite so much overstimulation. Like, we are so overstimulated as, as a, in our generation. Yeah, but then there's there's other there's there could be understimulation as well. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, sure, okay. It, it's the same thing as you know people saying, "Oh, back in my day, on 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 trains and buses, we used to sit and talk to each other, and you see pictures, and they're all reading fucking newspapers, newspapers and stuff, <laughs> right?" Like, it, it, I feel like people are fairly there. There are large changes in in sort of trends in in people, but I feel like with very deep rooted things, we are fairly constant. Mm. You know. And yeah, we could, we could, uh, the thing is that maybe, maybe I think the situation here is that, maybe I think the situation here is that possibly, you know, you, you've got people being uh, bored more often uh, due to the, our, our sort of current lifestyle, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're better or worse at dealing with being bored. Right. Okay. You know? So that, and they doesn't mean they get bored at a different speed. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, which is something that people often like to say that, oh, you know, you get bored so quickly because you're so used to doing so many things, but Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I've not looked specifically into that, so I'm, mm. I can't really say anything um, sort of uh, solid on it, you know? Gosh, I hate I'll be able to find a word. Mm. <laughs> Concrete. <laughs> Concrete. Concrete. Um, yeah, yeah. Concrete. <clears throat> Concrete. So studies 10 and 11, um, would they rather do an unpleasant activity 
then no activity at all. Mm -hmm. So they had the same instructions to entertain themselves with their thoughts in the lab, but they also had the opportunity opportunity to experience negative stimulation and electric shock if they wanted. Uh, in the first part of the study, um, they were uh, told to rate the sort of pleasantness of several positive stimuli um, and uh, negative stimuli as well. So example given for the positive stimuli is attractive photographs and the negative um, an electric shock and there was a quote from a bbc article uh, from the person that ran this study um professor, professor timothy wilson he said it was kind of like a severe static shock it wasn't a huge jolt but it was a little painful they seem to want to, sh to shock themselves out of boredom so to speak so nothing when you think of these shock it's not like you know electrocution obviously because you only get mm. one one and done um but it's also not it's not nothing like that's it also an interesting thing to s and strange thing to say they also wanted to shock themselves out of boredom because that's kind of like what you picked me up on just now is mm. like we can't say that that is what they're doing yeah it's a i mean he said they seem to that's a hypothesis he's, yeah he's, he's yeah. speculating there yeah um and we'll we'll get to it in a bit i think the way that um that he talks about his results are made and i see this a lot you know a lot of a lot of scientists kind of view the results as holding more water than they do hmm. you mm. know which is like fine you did a study on a couple hundred people that showed this don't say that your study shows that like you know i don't know you you you, you interviewed like 300 people and you found that um you know the younger ones uh really enjoyed um looking at plants more you can't then make the statement young people like looking at plants. No, just that the young people you interviewed yeah, like just, looking at plants. Yeah, yeah. I mean obviously there, there's a level where you, we can sort of make that statement. Yeah, yeah. But one study that hasn't been reproduced with a relatively small sample size in one country. Mm. No, on, let's, no, let's, young, let's, young let's... people like looking at plants. Okay, fine. Young scientific people... biological fact. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I'd be really interested to know if this effect where like people prefer to be electric shocked over being like un unstimulated holds when they've become used to getting electric shocked. So like, because it could be the novelty of like, you don't get electric shocked very much. Mm. So it's interesting to get electric shocked. It's a new experience. Whereas if you like, I get electric shocked all the time. Would, would you still choose to get electric shocked? Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, that'd be a good follow up study. Maybe you should do that. And it's actually probably pretty possible. You've got all those shocking games. You know, those games where it goes around and it randomly mm. shocks one of you. And so, yeah, people will absolutely shock themselves instead of being mm. bored because um, it's fun. So, as I said, the first part of this study, uh, they rated the pleasantness of different um, uh, stimuli, mm. positive and negative, looking at photos, getting electric, like, getting electric shocks. Mm. And the shocks weren't terribly strong, but they were strong enough to, you know, a little jolt, you know? Yeah. You definitely notice them. Like a sort of um, like a like a really really bad static shock, yeah. Which is never all, you know usually that bad. Um, and the 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 people in the study were told to say whether um, or not they would um, pay to experience or not experience um, the stimulus again if they were given five dollars. So just to explain that a little bit more succinctly, they were told, okay, I give you five dollars. How much of that would you pay me to experience this thing again or to not experience this thing again? Experience being electric shocked. Any of the stimuli. Okay. So how much would you pay to see this picture of the flowers again? Or how many? Uh, how much would you pay to, uh, you know, be electric shocked again or not be electric shocked again? And, you know, there were, there were obviously quite a few people that said, okay, I'll pay X amount to not be electric shocked again, right? If I was given $5. Um, and this is something, bear that in mind, because this is something that's going to come up later. This is a little bit of an issue with the study. What a fun way to make money. A lot of people in a room Make them so bored they electric shock themselves and then charge them to stop. <laughs> Luke, that's more or less capitalism. <laughs> it's happened it's again. It's not after dark. Come on. Let's <laughs> not get stuck here. Don't tell me I'm wrong, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what being a lamb. All I'm is. saying is don't open the can of worms. The can of worms has been open. It's uh, been sitting on the table this whole time. Let's right, ignore capitalism. it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just ignore the can. Can 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 capitalism? Can capitalism? No, it doesn't work. Capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Jap holding just your did hand, the gay, holding your bag of money. Jap just did the gay hand for anyone listening. But I'm holding a bag of money. <laughs> he is. Where did you get that bag of money? Can I have it? My offshore bank account. Really? Oh, cool. Thank. Can I have it? No. Oh, I thought you would have just taken it from under the desk where I keep lots of bags with big dollar signs on them. Oh, I've never seen those so before. you do. You've never seen my dollar sign bags? No. I have tons of them under That's here. That's what I rest my feet on. Quite <laughs> <laughs> Use them as pillows, clean with them, yeah. shower with them. Yeah. You know, they're great. So, 
use them as toilet roll whilst you're writing Sci Guys episodes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's the cheapest toilet roll you can get, yeah. I assume. I've never gone to buy toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> use a 50 to wet your ass. <laughs> well, obviously, but yeah. only when I run at 100. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we've got people that said that, oh, I'll pay this imaginary $5 to not experience being electric shot again. And so after that, they had the standard instructions for so the second part of that experiment. Uh, they had the standard instructions to just go sit in a room, um, you know, a completely blank room, unadorned, with their thoughts for, uh, in this case, 15 minutes. Um, and if they wanted, uh, they could uh, press a little button that was Ooh. sitting in front of them to to get an electric shock. Um, and so, you know, they... they they tried real hard, and it says, We went to some length to explain that the primary goal was to entertain themselves with their thoughts, and that the decision to receive the decision to receive a shock was entirely up to them. So we, they didn't want them thinking, oh, you've got a shock. It's just, no, no, no. Entertain yourself with your thoughts. No. But there is the little button in front of you. It's there if you want it. I, I would click yeah, it. The option's there. I would press it. I would immediately press it. I, like, I would just want to know. Absolutely straight away. Yeah. It's a really interesting study, actually, in terms of, like, you then place, if somebody is willing to say give up two dollars in mm. order to not get electric shocked you then place a price on how much they're willing to pay to not be bored yeah which is really interesting there is some issue with it and you're right it's, no it's no, not I a mean, direct yeah it's no, not no, a direct no, not an issue with what you're saying i mean an issue with this design of the study that we'll get to in a bit and it is interesting that you bring that up because it's kind it kind of relates it um and a study about that specifically would be really interesting but the way they've built this study mm. it just it, it it throws some sort of questions in the mix there. It doesn't it doesn't quite work. Mm. But like if you know it, that's that's not on, down to you at all. That's purely down to this sort of not poor study design, but sort of uh, something that's kind of missed. Imperfect. Yeah, imperfect. So a lot of people um, elected to receive the negative stimulation over no stimulation, uh, especially men. Sixty seven percent of men, twelve out of eighteen, gave themselves at least one shot during the thinking period. <laughs> people, yeah, a lot of people were shocking themselves. Um, so the range was zero to four shocks. Um, the mean was 1.47. So the average was 1.47, essentially. Um, and that is not including one outlier who uh, shocked himself 190 times. <laughs> mm, I want to meet that guy. A quote from Professor... I was thinking that's, that's, that's few too many. A lot, a lot too few. Well, uh, yeah, a quote from <laughs> Professor Wilson uh, was, I'm not sure what was up with him. <laughs> no. Direct no. Quote. no one is. No. Being, I do get him. I do get him though. I, that'd be me. Hang on. How many times minutes. of that is? In, how many times is that? No, because I would be like, can I shock myself so many times that I don't notice it anymore, or like it doesn't affect me? Because that's more than so that's twelve minutes. times a minute at least. Yeah. Twelve times a minute. Yeah, yeah. that is. That's once that every is five like seconds. Once every yeah. Five seconds. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Psst. That's fine. Psst. No, yeah, that's yeah, not fine. four seconds break. That's not <clears> fine. <throat> That's not fine that's at fine. all. That means he can't go four or five seconds without stimulation. Well, that's that's if you that was it. That mean a he standard, can't. That's a standard like, tsst, tsst, but it's not going to be like that. It'd probably be like, tsst, 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 like you're just doing it. He did it all in the first minute and then went and well, then took a fourteen minute rest. Yeah, but like <laughs> you'd have to immediately just start shocking yourself. <laughs> and interestingly, I'm pretty sure he was someone that said he would pay to not experience it again. Oh, <laughs> what does this say about psychology? Uh, people are weird man <laughs> that's why you need to study a lot of people to get rid of all the, all the weirdos the how loud are his thoughts oh, he, he wants to this, suppress them that badly we'll put it this way you put luke in that room and he just sits there like for you come in after 50 minutes he's like no no, no, no. go he's away still, go away starts levitating him <laughs> <laughs> you put us in that room we're just like holding down the button <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so um 25 of women um shocked themselves so uh oh. <laughs> Uh, so that was six to twenty-four, Boring. and the range was zero to nine shocks. Uh, the median being one shock, so the average being one shock. That is a severe difference between men and women in that study. Yeah, sixty-seven percent of men, twenty-five percent of women. Less than a third um, for women, and two thirds for men. Yeah. So, th so this is um, so those results, by the way, we're talking about only included people that said they would pay to not experience it again. Oh. Um, but I think the gender difference it says here the gender difference is probably due to the tendency for men to be higher in sensation seeking but also uh, it, this is weird I think that they um, what they did was they changed the strength of the shock depending on gender um, uh, so well maybe depending on the like, size of your body mm. well no slightly, slightly no, it wasn't based on the size of your body oh. it was based on it was based on um, on sex really so I, I think it was to do with the idea that I think apparently 
Pain thresholds, pain thresholds, but women have higher pain thresholds. I thought. I, yeah, I don't know. So or maybe, maybe. Oh, sorry. Or maybe. I'm sorry. Maybe it was higher for women. I'll get to it in a second. Yeah. But I, I do remember they there was a sort of dis disparity there with the with the sort of uh, intensity of the shock. I think between mm. uh, between sexes. But um, what it says here is that what is striking is that simply being alone with their thoughts for 50 minutes was apparently so aversive that it drove many participants to self-administer an electric shock that they had earlier said they would pay to avoid. I don't like this sort of conclusion to that yeah there's a lot of assumptions in there yeah um i th i think that yeah there, there could be any number of reasons that they that they pressed it and we'll get to that in a minute because there was actually another yeah. study that looked into this um after after seeing this one um but so, sort of some further questions after this study is sort of why is thinking so difficult and unpleasant um and so the the sort of the the uh, professor wilson goes on to say that one of the possibilities is that when left alone with their thoughts, participants focused on their own shortcomings and got caught in ruminative uh, thought cycles, which is mm. what we were talking about earlier. Mm. Um, so uh, apparently, that se apparently self focus does not invariably lead to rumination. A finding that was confirmed in their studies, which again is like similar to what we were kind of saying earlier. That was kind mm -hmm. of like my idea of like you know, it doesn't always happen. You could lead yourself down thought paths, and you know. If with some people there's that sort of background noise, it wouldn't necessarily be pre present in all people, mm. right? Um, and so they offer, you know, a, f a few um, explanations. And so it says, another reason why participants might have found thinking to be difficult is that they simultaneously had to be a script writer and an experiencer. That is, they had to choose, choose a topic to think about. Uh, I'll focus on my upcoming summer vacation and decide what would happen. Okay, I've arrived at the beach. I guess I'll lie in the sun for a bit before going for a swim and then mentally experience those actions. Mm. Right. So that was that might be um, a difficult thing there. Um, Having been a script writer, yeah, I'd electrocute like myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you, he says. He's got script writing days. I, yeah. Honestly, I, I find him. He's just shocking himself. Got my hand in the plug. <laughs> Please don't make me write a script. <laughs> Honestly, Rebecca has had to put all those little child locks on all the plugs. I know, you know, the yeah. little plastic things. Plastic there. cutlery. The you whole can't shebang. Get, can't get them out. Whenever yeah. I open Final Draft. <laughs> that is, the, that will the definitely, plug definitely be your Final Draft. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, apparently um, they said that maybe an another thing they could do in the future is see if they had something planned out to think about beforehand, if it was easier to not shock themselves. Um, and it says, there's no doubt that some sometimes people are absorbed by interesting ideas, exciting fantasies, and pleasant daydreams. Research has so shown that minds... Uh, are difficult to control, however, and it may be particularly hard, uh, difficult to control, however, and it may be particularly hard to steer our thoughts in pleasant directions and keep them there. Uh, this may be why many people seek to gain better control of their thoughts with meditation and other techniques with clear benefits. Without such training, people prefer to, uh, doing to thinking, even if what they are doing is so unpleasant that they would normally pay to avoid it. The untutored mind does not like to be alone with itself. Um, but also, I, I, I think there's just morbid curiosity. Mm, yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're I, not being told that this is what's being studied. So they're just like, "What well, that's like?" And I was like, yeah. you know, Novelty. you've experienced it again, yeah. and you're like, "What was that like?" You know, I mm. that's. I think that's probably that's, one of the reasons. Yeah, it wasn't, the wasn't so bad. Yeah, it wasn't too bad that they're motivated away from it. Yeah, and I think that's again, that's probably why the mean was so low. Um, you know, the range being zero to four shocks, the mean for, for men, and the mean being um one point four seven. So a lot of people were yeah. doing. Under one, sort of one done. Yeah, just I'll try that again. Yeah. Um, and for women as well, a zero to nine shocks was the range, but the mean was the, the mean was one. Mm. Yeah. So, so there's a few outliers there, like there was yeah. with that man who did it way too many times. <laughs> 190. <laughs> a shocker's Georg is an outlier and should not have been yeah. counted. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I reference memes and I'm like, my kid's gonna get this. No, I didn't get this. You didn't get this. Shocker's Spider, spiders Georg. What? Okay, I'll I show you. I don't even understand this. So you've not you've not seen that Tumblr meme. I wasn't on Tumblr. Okay, I, it's like okay, this is not does not need to be on pod, but I'll quickly go through. It, right, <laughs> okay. it's like oh you eat like you know apparently you eat like uh, seven spiders in your sleep every yeah. year. Oh um, yeah, I've heard, I've seen that. This is okay. this is not true. Right. Um, the average person eats zero spiders. Uh, but Spiders Georg, who lives in a mountain, <laughs> eats only spiders uh, like every day, was an outlier and uh, was an outlier and Adam should not have been counted. <laughs> Dragged the average up. Uh -huh. so, that is amazing. It's fucking like, hilarious, <laughs> it's right? So good. I think of Spiders Georg all the time. <laughs> I can't believe Spiders Georg is like is lost has been lost to time. Why do they keep counting him? <laughs> He's an Stop outlier. It. He should not have been counted. <laughs> 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 So yeah, um, let's think about some of the issues with the study. Have you guys got any ideas what issues might be with the study um, before I just quickly run through them, through them for you? Uh, only the ones that we sort of mentioned, mm -hmm. which is about how um, 
people like they're, they're drawing conclusions that that mm. might not be the Assuming. actual reason like it yeah. might be interest in novelty or it might be like um yeah i don't know i feel like they should have so, questioned them afterwards and been like why did you press it yeah why did you want to shock yourself? that'd be interesting i yeah. think that's more qualitative than quantitative data though, Maybe. which is difficult yeah. to that's difficult to standardize that into a yeah, study. yeah. But if they all said because i hate myself then you know you've not got a yeah, then... representative sample <laughs> 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 or the world's got a really big problem yeah. <laughs> So um, the the main thing here, and well, a few of the main things here, um, is that the level of shock, like I mentioned, was higher for men than women. And that was based on early results wherein women rated the shocks as more painful, but it wasn't varied between individuals. And this is one of those things that always winds me up when we do gender lines and it, uh. it doesn't necessarily help. Like, sorry, if we think that generally women have a higher pain tolerance, but in this study, they found that women were sort of more likely to rate it, rate the pain as being higher. Do it based on the individual rather than based on, you know, just arbitrary sex groups, yeah. Right? right? Yeah, right. <sighs> it's really frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, do you do you not think that do you not think that's like a, a does that not, is that something that frustrates you when they, you see an arbitrary line drawn? Well, I guess you'd have to look at the data. If there's clue if there's two very clear like humps in the <laughs> line of where people are generally rating like five on the pain scale, then f kind of fine. But like like kind of fine. Yeah. Um, because you might not have the time to calibrate every single person's pain scale. Um, and if you have very clearly like the majority of women are rating um their five here and the majority of men are rating their five there may be fine although i'm not scientifically trained so i don't know oh, fair enough fair enough but yeah. yeah but we'd have to look at where that data falls so this was uh, this and this is coming from an article that i read it said some uk researchers have questioned aspects of the study um including the level of shock so this was this this is coming from researchers that have said this this seems like it's a bit mm. of an issue um there's uh apparently individual pain, pain thresholds vary widely um and also the, the thing that I was kind of hinting at earlier is that hypothetical payments could exaggerate people's answers. So if I, because if you think about it, if I say, oh, if I was to give you ten pounds, how much would you like pay me to not hit you in the face? Well, it's an imaginary ten pounds, and I don't need to think of it as my own money. Whereas if I was to say to you, how much you'll your get own ten money? pounds at the end of this study? Yeah. How much of it do you want to give to me now to not be electrocuted again? Well, no, that's not that's still hypothetical money to answer no, the question. No, but you actually will get ten pounds at the it, end but of the study. But it, it doesn't make a difference, though. No, because it's hypothetical money still. But you will get the ten pounds. Yeah, but it's still but hypothetical until you get it. Until you get okay. It. Well, you give them the ten pounds, right. and then go. How much of that you want to give me to not shock you again? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the reason that they said the the ten pounds that they, as in, oh, we'll give you ten dollars if or if we gave you ten dollars, how much of it would you give away, um, to not get this again? I. Th I guess off the top of my head, that would probably be to try and account for people's differing um, socioeconomic status um, or different, like you know, level, like amount, how much money right. they've got. But also, it doesn't though. It, it doesn't because ten, ten pounds is ten, different yeah. to different people. If you're if you've got like a hundred sitting in your bank account, <laughs> ten dollars is going to be worth less to you than someone who's got one pound. You'd be in like, bank please account. shock me a lot and pay me for every one. Yeah, give me money. For, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> That's the guy who was pressing it 150 times, thinking he was going to get yeah. $10 oh, for every press. Oh, every, I'm going to be yeah. a millionaire. <laughs> uh, so Professor Wilson said that he wasn't saying that humans were incapable of contemplation. Uh, he said, I don't want to exaggerate this. I do think that all of us in our daily lives uh, do find our minds wandering to pleasant topics or thinking about something we're looking forward to. I think what's hard is doing this on the spot, which is fair enough. If you're just told, sit and think. It, you know, it, it, you're not necessarily prepared for it. It could be, it could be difficult. It's something you kind of need to get into a flow with. Um, Professor Ivo Vlaev, um, who is a behavioral psychologist at Warwick University and Imperial College London, said that the findings are very interesting, but the electric shocks could be overemphasized. Uh, the bottom line is that they felt miserable, he told BBC News. Research has shown that happiness is not only about experiencing pleasure, you need a sense of meaning and purpose, which you lack in these conditions. And when you have that task to do, you have, sense, um, you have that sense of purpose, even if it's a simple task. Uh, Dr. Chris Chambers, a senior research fellow at Cardiff University School of Psychology, um, he was less impressed with the results. This is all from this BBC article, by the way. Um, he said, uh, this is essentially a study showing that people don't like to be bored, um, he told BBC News. How, could, how this could take up 11 experiments in a major scientific journal is a little mystifying. The most interesting aspect of the study is that their research subjects prefer to give themselves electric, sho electric shocks rather than experience boredom. Perhaps the subjects simply did it to stay awake, and having now read the author's paper from beginning to end, I can understand their plight. Boom! What a burn, right? I wonder. It, it, it kind of as well. It's like if you imagine rather than like don't like to be bored mm -hmm. as like uh you know um the concept of boredom, 
I guess it sort of suggests, at least to a certain extent, that the subjective experience pain is m less undesirable than the subjective experience boredom. Because uh, there is that thing. Level, but yeah. yeah, because there is that thing about how the human um, emotional system evolved by hooking into the physical pain um, system in the brain. I believe that's correct. Um, I don't know whether that also includes boredom, but boredom, I suppose, could be considered an emotion. Um, and if boredom, the emotion, is hooking into the pre-existing circuitry for pain in the brain, um, then it's not. They're, they're kind of interchangeable. If you're like, I'm feeling this thing, I will externalize it, um, and it's going through similar systems in the brain. That that makes sense. I, I know. What you, I, yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It also just sort of to me, this is just like evidence of like we're not very good at training our minds in the West. And we should probably do a better job. Absolutely, it's just evidence of the fact that we're not very good at that. We're not supposed to be. But like, no, I know. You, but I mean, imagine training someone's. If you people, if people trained their minds, you would probably have fewer people working. Yes, at jobs. That, Lest um, we not consume. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you do not want, you do not consume, and if you do not consume, then this system falls apart. Yeah, what well, are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah manuf manufactured inadequacy. Uh, so he did it again. He did it again. Oh, I thought it was being sneaky yeah. there. I didn't say the words. <laughs> so I looked up another another study that followed this one uh, from different um, sort of uh, uh, researchers. And it said, uh, did participants shock themselves because they were bored, uh, monotony, or because they were sad, negative feelings for bore from boredom, right? So, you know what I mean? Do you, you, you get what this is asking? Because in this, in the original study, you, you can't tell whether they were shocking themselves because they were bored or they were shocking themselves because they were feeling sad because they were bored, you know? Right, sure. So, is that on the same is, thing there? No. Is the is the shocking to break the monotony, or is the shocking because oh. it's a more pleasant experience than Being the negative sad. experience? Yeah, which is mm. kind of what you're talking about there. Yeah, right? emotional. Yeah, emotional system. So the I'm not going to get super into this because you know um I've I've got you know I've got a whole lot of stuff here. Uh, it's linked in the description. It's really interesting. I would definitely recommend reading through it. Uh, but essentially, what they did was they showed some people um some sad films. Um, and they also did a similar thing where they sat them in a room. And I think they had chocolate um, and um, sort of uh, <clears throat> an electric shock button. Um, and I, I can't remember whether they were together or whether they were sort of separate, the chocolate and electric shock. But essentially what they found is that, yeah, the shocking was because of boredom. So during watching the sad film, people were more likely to eat the chocolate. Uh, sorry, during um, sort of boredom, um, people were more likely to shock and eat the chocolate. Um, so if you had chocolate in front of you and you, and you were doing the boredom thing, you're more likely to eat chocolate than you were when you were watching the sad film. And same for the shocks. You were more likely to shock yourself when you were um, being bored rather than watching the sad film. And so what they kind of gather from that is that negative feelings um, aren't what cause people to do the shocks. It's just the monotony. Obviously, uh, the study isn't necessarily perfect. It's difficult to it's difficult to study these sorts of things but it is some more evidence there to suggest that um to suggest that it's the monotony that's causing people to shock themselves because it's like something different you know mm. this is this is novel this is something interesting so it is interesting there um sort of if, when you look at it as a whole the the shocking science of boredom that people will literally give themselves electric shocks rather than sit with their thoughts for 15 minutes yeah which is insane right yeah i think we should try it no. Uh, Live demonstration. No. Lots of YouTubers. Part two. Stick them in a room. Okay, how about this? We will upload a bonus video of the three of us sitting in silence for 6 to 15 minutes. <coughs> we will film it at some point soon. Let's start now. No. Okay. We don't have the time to sit. <laughs> going to get an electric shock pen each. Oh, no, no, no. No shocks. Just sitting oh. for... Oh. And that can be the Hell. content. That'll be the content. <sighs> yeah. All right, well, that's going to be so hard. If you want that, go to Patreon, I guess. Yeah, go to Patreon to see us sit for six to 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, how funny would that be? Not very. I think <laughs> not, not while filming. I, I think it'd that. be really funny to upload a video of us just sitting doing nothing for six to 15 minutes. Yeah. Be great. Okay. Cool. I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. So that is the end of this sort of you know the, 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 the show but there's still one little thing we gotta do first the quick fire quiz dun, dun, quick dun, fire dun. Quiz. shocking Shock edition, edition. <laughs> so the quick fire quiz is very simple it's very straightforward there's the same rules every single time we do the quick fire quiz I will ask one question one question within two of you and the first person to buzz in with the correct answer after finished asking the question wins what do they win champ oh uh, nothing gosh darn right yeah yeah. so I'm gonna ask you both yep. what are your buzzers Luke what's your buzzer obviously 
God <laughs> sake. I knew it. So you always ask him first, and <laughs> I get the, the bad one. Well, because you get to say stuff before he does. Yeah. Yeah. What's your buzzer? What's and your I, buzzer? I always get the bad Well, I have to think of one now. You, I, of all the buzzer sounds in the world, I can't believe that there is only one good one that Luke gets first. Think, of, think outside the box. Don't go for the obvious answer. You can go for the scream mm. of being electric shocked if you want. Mm. Just go for a board sound. Mm. 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 Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mm. <laughs> that's a little bit too. Mm. That's a little bit too aroused. Mm. We want some low arousal boredom mm. here. Okay. Dear me. That's what I want. So the question is. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is. What was the most number of shocks administered by one person in the 2014 <laughs> study? I didn't finish asking the oh, question, Luke. Ask yeah. oh. What is your answer? 190. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Well you win. <laughs> I was going to say electric shock, but I don't have anything to do with that. So just try and give yourself one. <laughs> and I think that is more or less it. Before we go, I also want to tell you guys to you know, check out our Discord, obviously. And we've got a new show. Over on our Patreon, it's Sci Guys After Dark. It's a whole new podcast just for you. And you know, just because Sci Guys has ended, it doesn't mean that the conversation has. So if you enjoy us just chatting, go to our Patreon and uh, check out Sci Guys After Dark. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to say? No, I'm bored. Bzzz. Very good. I want to well, shock myself. <laughs> Shocking. No. Shocking. <laughs> Before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to Executive Producers Ashley Miller and Finn TZ. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can join our community on Discord or you can find a goddad to Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. I am not Corey everywhere. Oh, I'm Jemkin everywhere. I'm Luke Cutforth <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Ah! <laughs> Goodbye.